So Sean and Fabian, uh, thank you very much for joining the Toast Talks podcast. Um, so you're both founders of MFC Sports. Uh, so you're based here in the Northwest. Uh, the business is based in the Northwest and we have MD and Ops. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I really do appreciate you both coming today. Um, and it's the first time we've actually had two on the podcast. So a uh, first for that. And uh, like I was saying to Sean earlier, uh, when I first pitched the Toast Talks uh, idea, MFC were on top of the list um, and the guy that I was pitching it to kind of said, well, what makes you think you'd get MFC? So I'm going to be sure to tell him that not only did I get one of from MFC, I got both of them. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> both so, of us. Yeah. It was actually um, our first uh, podcast. Your, your podcast show. debuts. Yeah. I said. We'll make it a, an enjoyable experience. Don't worry. That, that, that'll be fine. Um, Super. So you both grew up in Drumore, Um and I, I think it's safe to say that sports played a an important role in both your early years. So, big into your your football. Ma- majorly, majorly, <laughs> majorly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, How do the wives feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you stood at the stage. Definitely. Uh, I think the new the both new to are getting into this, yeah. the yeah, stage. Yeah. Um, no, just just thanks for for us to be here too, Michael. Ah, uh, no worries. Um, no, the, the the sport the sport at home. Um, I mean, anybody in that locality will know that. Football, the GAA, particularly in Tremore, is is um, the heartbeat of, yep. the, of the community, mm-hmm. and um, me, me and Fabian grew up in, into that. Like, and I suppose as, as this transpires and this goes ahead, this conversation, you'll see just uh, we took a lot of, of of things from the football, you know, and, and yep. transfer them. So we're very lucky to have that as as young people. I would say. Ah, uh, that's right. No, I suppose as Sean says, they're in, in Tremor, in a small rural parish like that. You know the. The football is, 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 is the big hub. Yeah. Um, I often say to Sean, I used to wake up every morning and you'd get out of the bed. First thing you were thinking about is the football and <laughs> the diet and, you know, about the training in the night and what you're going to be doing and all these things. Now you're waking up in the morning, you're thinking different, uh, you know, business, what are we going to be doing in the day? Sure. What, what are we looking to get, achieve? What's the target? So, yeah. Um, but we, you know, as Sean says, the football and being part of a team, it was great for what we do now, you know, yeah. it really was that. And also the business that we're in now and what we're doing is great for replacement for the football. Because yeah, yeah. a lot of the times, you know, people leave the sport and then they don't have something to fulfill that void. Like and so you're and st- still you part of the community that. and, and you can you can participate on it. That's and, right, and be, that's be right. A good part of it. Um so no, yeah. it's it's great from that. But you're not actually related. Uh, a, a, a lot of people kind of might misunderstand that you're related, but you're actually not. Uh, so good friends from from your sporting background. So you played together for quite a long time. Is that that how you originally met, or was it at school, or what, what way did that come about? Yeah, well, I'm a few few years older than than Shana here, and uh, good, good few. <laughs> <laughs> three, three years. <laughs> um, but I would always have known Sean, always, and we both actually went to St. Dumpton as the primary school in, in the in the village, and uh, then up through the football, I would have known, and but probably not until. We were, Senior football till Sean mm. come on to the senior football and I was playing senior football at the time. Did we, you know, become really friendly and and really close, you know? Well, funny actually. Whenever I was doing the research for it, um, I saw on one of the forums. Now it's going back. It was going back to two thousand and seven. Somebody was talking about uh, a Dremore match, and uh, the comment was that uh, the two of you were the best players in the pitch. Was it me so, telling you that? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> was it you left that comment? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Well, self praise. Sure, that's you have to take it where you can get it. I those are the days, like <laughs> nah, back in the days. But um, so you, you played. You both played to a fairly high standard, um, and you had quite a bit of success with the various levels of, of football. Um, so, including a, a Tyrone Senior Champions Championship yeah. with Dremore. Um No, well, we both. I uh, we played <clears throat> for Dremore obviously, and we had that success. Um, with we were lucky to be on, on such a great team, you know. But Sean went to a higher level again. He actually played for, for Tyrone, okay. which is the highest level you can get to, you know, and played there for a number of years. So um, he, he was the winner in that stakes. Now. Oh, was he? Okay. Does he, ever, <laughs> does he ever bring that up? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Never rub it on. Uh, that's right. Uh, no, I, um, as far as, you know, um, yeah, grew up a um, few, few years above in, in, in primary school, etc. And then when... The football really gets competitive 13, 14, 15, 16, and you're in the minors. 
Yeah, and the seniors. I mean, this was this was our captain here for for quite a while. So I was coming into that. There was already a, a big influence from Fabian and other fellas. So to to step into that and to start playing seriously competitive football together was was great. Um, yeah. and, and we carried that through to to, to the day. You know, so. excellent. Um, and so fr- from then, so football obviously finished secondary school or high school, um, and then kind of go on then to to career path. So you went yourself, Sean. You went to uh, some areas and became a primary school teacher. Right. And Fabian, you you went on and, and did a trade and and set up your own business. So you actually had a bit of a business exposure and rolling that, but you also started up your own to run through college. So your your mugs for clubs give you your first um, taste of business right. life. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, how many years did you kind of enter that world? How long was it before? Uh, I I left school sixteen and uh, went straight into straight into plaster. Uh, yeah, it's a big uh, trade's a big thing to who we're, we're from, you know. And yeah. straight straight into a job and always wanted to do it. Yeah, I actually never never liked a day of school when I was at it. Uh, yeah, so that's what I done and I actually done for for nineteen years and I loved it when I was at it. You know, loved yeah. lo- lo- loved the plaster. In fact, and Sean and I used to come out in the summer. And, uh, oh, can you uh, both blast us? Oh, I was a oh, uh, was the boss for a long time. <laughs> in, the, in, the, <laughs> in the summer, you know, but uh, no, thankfully, Shawnee had started um, mugs for clubs. I'm sure he can tell you about that. Yeah. So you you, you kind of were still participating in the GAA community in that sense? Uh, absolutely, Michael. Uh, and honestly, just sitting here now thinking about all this, I mean, <clears throat> it was never, uh, ever, you know, Hell went and wanting to be overly academic or anything out there. It was it was actually the football as well, you know, that uh, uh, bit of football in secondary school and crack up, and then from that you want to maybe push you on and see can you, you know, and, and some areas was a big pull for football as well, the cultural environment there and the community. Yeah. So at at I suppose the the core of my thinking was always football was and I have no bother saying it, it was never the want to be. In third level education, or, or want yeah, to push yeah. on to be a, a professional. I mean, um, as Fabian was saying there, he he started working in the early age. The most of trade time, there's lots of great tradesmen, and that that was, uh, um, you know, I often thought about it throughout school. That's what I, I worked for a lot for this this man too. So, it it really I suppose by default almost you know, you're playing up through the levels, and you and you want to push on if that makes sense. So that's how I ended up being in Belfast, really, right, and thoroughly. Um and um, uh, so 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 that's that's really it. And throughout that time, and any student will will tell you that they really do not have any money at all. Um, and that's that's the life <laughs> that you have, and that's the bottom line. Um, that's part of the fun. A few good nights out, like does yeah. it doesn't have the the cash flow either, like but um, at that point then, or at a certain point, um, you you have to do something for yourself. I've been working part time. In the bar at home and different wee bits and pieces like, but um, I realised that there was maybe an opportunity in amongst <clears throat> GA clubs and and local football clubs and and uh, different organisations for merchandise for things like mugs and pens and key rings and I mean you see when you in Liverpool all yeah this yeah time, you don't actually see it very much in uh, locally. Mm-hmm. Um, so I basically just set up a Facebook page and managed to source these things. Mm-hmm. And that really was the birth of Mugs for Clubs. Um, okay. It was a very, you know, I, I was able to handle it quite easily when I was in Belfast. I mean, you're, you're talking a team might want um, 100 mugs printed, something like that. They'll buy them in an X amount to sell them all. And it, it, it was very easily sorted, let's say. Mm-hmm. And it kept me going when I was studying. It kept me going with a few quid and um, I was able to uh, to be independent at the time, which is a big thing. So that, that was really then the birth of uh, Mugs for Clubs and it, as we'll see, it transitioned into MFC, you know. So you were a primary school teacher for a while and obviously you, you had the business um, and then you had young families as well early, so you both had kids. Um, and then in April 2016, you thought, no better time now than now <laughs> yeah. to to actually leave our jobs and uh, and and give it a, give a go for for MFC Sports. So it started at in, in April 2016, but that must have been a huge risk to take. Like, how did you even convince your wives to do that? 
<laughs> um, yeah, well, how I actually got involved was that um, I'd been I had been in Donegal for a weekend and I was in uh, one of the bars somewhere and I'd seen up on up on the wall in the bar was a a picture of a map like of of Ireland and then it, beside it it showed each GA county and how many all Irelands they'd won, but it was a very old picture and there wasn't much detail on it. But I was saying to calling my wife, I was saying that picture's lovely. It's pretty they wouldn't put more detail on it and have the winners of uh, all st- or how many provinces they've won in both hurling and football and it could be a lot more detail on it and could be a lot more pleasing to the eyes and stuff like that and if it, if it was like that I would like one myself so then a few weeks later I was telling Shani about this picture and I had the great idea that I had for the, this picture and, and Shani being the man he says go I'll sort that I I will I, that would sell yeah he says I will be fit to sort that so that's how that come about Um, so we went and got a, a couple of hundred of them made right yeah, and then we were out round, and we had one. We were going to different places to to try and sell them, um. And one very wet Saturday down in Letterkenny, <laughs> we were going from each and each bar and each shop and that trying to sell this this picture we had. And we stopped for a cup of tea somewhere in the middle of it, and uh, Johnny was just chatting about you know things are getting busy, and he could see uh, there's a demand. He was hats and socks and clubs were start more clubs are coming on board and. He just spit it to me. He says, "Would you would you be interested in coming along, fifty fifty in this?" Um, and I says, "Yep, def- definitely would be." I actually said, "Well, maybe not fifty fifty. I'm sure maybe you want more of it than that." And he goes, "No, no, be fifty fifty from the start." So that was that was the start of how it come about and how I I become involved in it. And then it just got busier and busier and busier. And Sean, I put to tell you about about how it come until that we left our job, like. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of uh, it was a fair bit of hustle there in terms of going around selling them yourselves and and you know there was <laughs> <laughs> if they're selling it's not so bad when they're not selling it's harder. <laughs> well, <laughs> but so at right. the start it was literally the two of you yeah and how long was it just the two of you what what an, an MFC uh, well so the so whenever you decided <clears throat> to leave your jobs and stuff like that and and you know I will just um I. Uh, but more, you know, perspective on that, you know, um, mugs for clubs had, it had been gathering a bit of weight, right? You know, a bit of momentum, mm-hmm. and there was an awareness, let's say, just just locally. Mm-hmm. So you have all this kind of merchandise, you know, going for and clubs and different societies were starting to take this on. Fabian was very aware of this, and that's and I actually remember it was one night after three, and I remember he said it to me, Fab, about the <clears throat> the. The picture that he was been speaking about, and I thought that fitted in just naturally very well with what we were trying to achieve, most for clubs, <clears throat> and and f- from that, and just what he was saying here, you you could see that you had a, a nucleus of kind of products and yeah. and and clubs, GA clubs, football. They were coming on and saying, "We'll take a wee bit of this and that there," and then they were starting to ask about clothing and team wear and and the the, the smallest of items like. Football socks or gloves, maybe hats, that type of thing, scarves even. So then we started to. That's how naturally this started to pick up a bit of weight. Yeah. And um, people were recurrently coming back looking for another forty or another fifty or another hundred. And then <clears throat> we could see in just the conversation that we did have in Eric Yanni that right, this is going to potentially be something worthwhile looking at. Yeah. So it's important now we put a bit of structure in this mm-hmm. potentially uh, register a company. And just give it a shot. So there was no great plan mm-hmm. at that time, but there was a, a vision, let's yeah. say, uh, you know, somewhere in the back of the head, there was the opportunity to really make something. And, and you'd already kind of seen the market was there and there was demand for the thing. So it wasn't that you were going That's on right. completely blind. You, you, you knew that you'd been out there and you, you had a good relationship with a lot of clubs already. And, and so you knew what you could do. So yeah, just yeah. Giving it, giving it more of a, of a focus, really. That that's really it, and and uh, you know we we're an extremely parochial part of the world here, and people speak to people, uh, of course, and that is how we were able to maybe gather that wee bit more man- momentum because, um, word was getting out there was a supplier of this, albeit very small, uh, but it was an option, an yeah. alternative, and um, so that was April sixteen. Then we we travelled up till, uh, Anniskillen. Uh, and we registered the company there. Okay. The there. And so, 
in the in the early days, you know, you're saying that you were you were physically doing the the kind of sales and the shops and stuff like that. And you know, whenever you started to kind of move into the clothing, where was it still you guys out doing the sales, or did you take somebody on to do that, or uh, was it just you guys from the start? Yeah, it, it was mostly just. I mean, we we would have spoke most days on the phone. I can't remember that. He was still on the site working at that time. I was still in school, actually. So <clears throat> we were both, our core responsibility was with our jobs at that time. Yeah. But <clears throat> the momentum was building. So <clears throat> it was basically all online too, Michael, you know, the, the yeah. Facebook page predominantly. So just between the two of us, each day we'd have a conversation, we'd make a decision, and then we'd get it done the next day. And it just gathered like that right mm-hmm. up until, actually it was June 2017. Before, right. I, before I left school. Okay. So it was over a year after the company were re- was registered. And uh, oh, I remember the to and fro with making that decision. It was it was tricky because... Uh, oh, I would say. Was, you know, it was, it was looking good in school and all of that. And then a few a few months later, maybe the turn of the new year in 18, Fabian needed a bit more time to to uh, get sorted out a few things. And he was in a partnership. So um, yeah. really that's how it, it, it started to pick up until we both eventually left our... our Post, so it was an evolution it wasn't just to say that it was a, a day one decision it was kind of like as it grew and as it grew you you kind of got a bit more confident yeah. and this has actually got a good shot here and well, that's right i suppose it was it was just getting busier and getting busier and it was getting hard to manage it. and it was you know either go and give it everything and, and see what we can do or be wrestling with us for the next whatever number yeah. of years you know um and as Sean says, I was in a partnership with, with the Plaston. Um, great fella and a good friend of mine too. So I wanted to give him that bit of time. I wanted to give him three, three or four months. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, to, right. to get all wound up. And thankfully, Sean led me to do that, you know, and was looking after all the things. Yeah. Um, so that that was it. Thank, thankfully, we haven't looked back. I, th- that was a busy time. <laughs> I would say <laughs> that, was a, that was a busy time. Oh, you know, the, the memories are all floating back now. Yeah. Um, some on bad, some on good. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, too, like um, my eldest fee is now eight. She's, she'll um, she'll be nine soon. But she, she had just, um, you know, she was maybe really two years old at that stage, three. And uh, <clears throat> I, I remember, you know, going to school and, and working in Dromore at the time. So it was an hour away from here, um, coming back and then. I mean, I had football training. You're still playing lots of football. So you still were, so you were oh, playing, oh, working yeah. full time, and yeah. and the, the the business on the side. That's right. You That's just right. wasn't like free time, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you think too much on free time. Too much time. But I remember just sorry, just an additional point. Let me just wrap this bit up. But <clears throat> the Facebook Messenger page was the main source of contact for mugs for clubs at yep. that time you know and tr- beginning of the transition in the mfc but and i do remember that <clears throat> you know and, and lots of people will connect with this because you it is a rite of passage as yep. far as i'm concerned that you do have to put them errors in it doesn't just happen overnight and you'd have been up maybe the one or two a lot of mornings like getting back to messages and when I think of the craziness of that now, like, a lot of people would have been getting a response from me at like <laughs> half one in the morning, you know. <laughs> They're probably thinking it was fucking mental. This boy's crazy. But, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right, doing the feeding for feet. So you can, you, and everybody will connect with that, you know. Uh, they get to the point where right, things are very busy. But I, you were working during the day, so was he, having a conversation in the evening. We're both still playing football. Um, young families and that really all of that combined was the catalyst to say right yeah. we need to something has make to make a decision yeah. here you have to you know, give it your, uh, give it your all um so business is kind of notoriously difficult and they have their ups and downs and things like that so uh, and every business goes through like growing pains and, and certain things where they have to do that are there any in particular that you know any learning experiences or any parts where you kind of go and jeez like you know when you look back on it now, you go, we used to do it that way. And you're kind of going, like, why did we, that was crazy. How did we do that? Um, are there any in particular that stuck out or are there too many to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty. There's lots of them. I suppose the big thing is that we used to do was, was the fitting days for clubs where we used to go out to the club. Mm. Um, 
I suppose when we, we started this, we always said that we want to make it as easy as possible. Teamware shouldn't be the headache it is. You know, there was an opinion on teamware like that it's just a hassle and nobody wants to take it on every year. And we know that from being involved. Yeah. So we were very adamant about, you know, teamware shouldn't be, shouldn't be the headache it is. Like surely there's a better way. So it was the fitting days come up to mm-hmm. with um, the, where we would go out to the club and we would take samples with us. People come in and see them um, and place their order through us we would lift the money and take their order on a on a on a, on a sheet when you say we Sean like and I. you too yeah yeah okay yeah okay um so and then eventually there was when we were taking more staff on there was more coming out so mm-hmm. this was going on and it was great but uh of course the busier it got then the more difficult it got because we could be in uh Bally castle maybe one day at a, at a fitting and the next day we'd be in clonus and Maybe Belfast and maybe a part of Donegal. So we were just going all we were all over, um, down to Dublin, you name it. And then when we were busy at the nights with the fittings, because a lot of the clubs, um, you know, it's all the night suits them best. Uh, then the next day we were spending time putting putting the sheets together, putting the order, putting all the order process and the order, all this. Um, so I think then we that's the big thing was we 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 brought in the link, which is an order management system for yeah. Where people can can order online, and I suppose that was that was a massive one for us because the fitting days were great; they were great for the club, and they're good. But but we couldn't sustain it. You know, it wasn't manageable. Wasn't scalable. You know, it wasn't scalable. It mm. wasn't scalable. Yeah. Um. A lot so, of personal commitment in that. A lot of personal, and now we 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 do we look back and go, how did we how did we even do that? You know what you're asking there. Yeah. How did we go run from one club one part of the country and trying to get it going? And, and organize it all, and I don't know how we don't know. But, but there's a, a general thing from from whenever you're starting a business in general is it just if it needs done, you just you just get it done, and that's that's, right. that's the way. So and then there seems to be a lot of, a common theme that it's just like that just needs sorted. So let's just sort it. Um, and that, no that, that's one example. I'm sure, like, there's, oh, I, there's many. Uh, totally, and <clears throat> just uh, I suppose to keep that. Structure, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19. There was never, uh, um, speaks myself anyway, there was never a great background to business. Mm -hmm. When you think of now sitting down to start a business would be a completely different thing. It would be, so it would be day and night difference because you'd be setting out your plans, you'd be looking at uh, cash flow, you'd be looking at all of these very important things. Really, at that time, all all we had was a, a kind of, a kind of, blissful ignorance towards yeah. this, mm-hmm. like, and just that persistence, that inbuilt kind of mechanism that, whatever it took to get it done, it was just going to be done. It just was going to be done. You just knew that, you know, um, what whatever it took to sort it out. Now, now it would be a completely different so. The fitting days, great example. You'd have been coming out of places with a lever arch fail. I, we actually left them behind us one one day, leaving one club. But was that busy? A lever arch fail, full of the orders, and if you'd have lost one of them sheets, like you know, somebody would have made a paid you fifty quid or hundred quid for and placed their trust in you. Yeah, and you were leaving with so many sheets. It was crazy stuff. It yeah. was, so that that's one example. Um of a growing pain and, and how we had to maybe try and look at evolving the situation you know mm-hmm. and then all other things as well things like <clears throat> premises we we, we, got, we got the premises and I think late 2017 well you know we needed a base and we needed mm-hmm. some type of credibility as far as, far as we're considered that time the signage and, and all of that and just Spencer Road here corner building was, was great for us it, it, it did the job at that time but even going around getting that sorted and you know that is a that is a headache yeah and, uh, those small things there are dozens yeah um, and i'm sure people listening to this will, will connect with that as well but it, it's absolutely nothing to be afraid of if you have you have the bit between your teeth like, yeah it has to be done just there's a clear a clear passion for for football like he's both clearly love football do you think that helps the fact that you know if you don't love what you do and you don't have it, do you think it makes it much, much harder? Or the fact that you love it, you're kind of going, well, you know, listen, I don't mind putting in the hours because I can see where it goes. I, I think that 
passion in anything you do, you know, makes it much easier. Like even when I was at the Plaza, and I, I did, I loved it, and I had a passion for it, and you know, yeah. And anybody I worked along with, you could see the men that enjoyed it and did it, and how good they were at it, and the pleasure with them, and the men that didn't. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely the case. We we love it. We do. Yeah. We we love what we do. And, and do you think so? With with GA, you need a fierce amount of discipline, obviously, for the training and stuff like that, and the better, the grit and the determination and the persistence and things like that. Because you were so heavily involved in kind of, uh, you know, in that community, do you think that transferred over very well into your business? That you had, you still had that grit and persistence and discipline to to actually just do what needs done. Yeah, those characteristics, like yeah. those values, one one hundred percent. Yeah, uh, and it's, it's not something you sit and talk about very often, but <clears throat> just with that connection and the historical connection, and I suppose what football and the couple three times just read one and, and just been through those tougher days on a football field and, and different that definitely you carry that with you you know the defeats the hurt the, yeah. the, the response to that mm-hmm. um it is actually you know it's it's transferable um because you're going to have the a, a good few difficult days uh, when you're growing a business without, without a doubt yeah and, uh, there's really good days and then there's really yeah, bad days. Yes, there's definitely there's a few there's been a few days um, in the past where I would really sat and question everything. Yeah, because you things happen that you just don't foresee or anticipate, and it's the same with football. And yeah, you just always get back on the horse yeah. and, and persist. And dust yourself down. Dust it down. Because it. it's really what else are you gonna do? You just you just you have to do that. So I would say definitely the, those things have been. Oh yeah, definitely. Like that, you know, for us being so heavily involved in in the team sport, you know, it is there's so there's so many things of it. Like even from, even to have a good team around you, you know, we were very lucky to, yeah. to be to be part of such a good team. Yeah. Um, and now that's what we have done has have built a good a good team around us, um, and everything from you know you set targets and individual targets and team targets and all, all those things we do yeah. in business now. But as Johnny says, and the bad days in any sport anybody plays, there's there's bad days. But then the good days to make up for it, yeah. you know, and 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 we feel that's the exact the exact same yeah. business, yeah, yeah. You know, I only I uh, said, Johnny, we were talking about this. The only difference is that there's there's no final whistle mm. in business. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> you have to keep playing. Uh, you have to keep you have to keep <laughs> going or something. And, and even fundamentally, and uh, you know, that's one side of it. But our business is built on on football and and sports and participation. Yeah, and that you know even the, the football alone for us to enter into that market because it was very natural and we understood it and you yeah. know the, the the kits and the presentation of everything that is where that innate kind of passion and that 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 comes with it as well so it was yeah. it's not as if we were going into a, a completely alien market of, well like you said you i mean, what I mean? You, you knew the problems that the clubs had and how much of a pain That's it right. was so you're trying to solve a, a, a problem that you had experienced and and, mm-hmm. and the time so i suppose it again it comes back to the fact that it was a, a gradual thing and you were drawn on your experiences and things like that at the start so whenever you kind of started it and you could sort of see it in the conversation that you had on the on on kind of giving it a go and and going into it together did you ever think it would end up it would grow to what it is today did you ever think about it or did you just kind of go ah listen let's just give it a shot and see where it goes um uh, it's tricky. i suppose you you like to think it could but uh you know and you do you you have you have you have to believe it and some some days when things are going well, you think, well, this this is going to be achievable. Yeah. And then other days when it's not, you're thinking, well, like you know, it's out of reach. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's uh, I suppose the more things you achieve, then the more re- realization that you can achieve more. Yeah. You know. And it's that constant, but that by constant, but by but by but. If we sat down and said, would we be here in five six years, or whatever? Um, probably not. Like you would, yeah. you know. You and if you had known the the probably the learnings and the and the things that are going to happen along the way, you might have gone. I don't know why there's a lot of work. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we oh. look look back and things that we did and stuff, and you you forget you actually done them, but you're going, gee, I'd have to do that again, you know. But yeah, yeah. so so many things that we we're just looking to get better and change and done and change and things that. <laughs> Just looking back through old email trails and stuff, mm. just. But like you're saying, it's kind of a rite of passage for for the business that you can look back and with fondness and kind of go, ah, oh, listen, you know, that's look at what we've achieved so far. And again, it's it's a similar to the, the football experience where you're like, 
listen, you know, as, as a team, how far we've come and you know, we ended up doing this and whatever. So it's mm -hmm. it's good from that point of view. In in relation to uh, the role, so obviously you're MD, Sean, and Fabian, your uh, operations. Was that easy enough to, to establish those roles? Um, was it just kind of drawn on your individual skill sets? Or I imagine there's a fair amount of crossover at, at particular stages, but um, was that easy enough to come by? Or? Um, it was, aye. Aye. aye it, was. it was. I suppose there was a time we were both doing everything, and, it, you know, it wasn't. And we, we, we had help with it too. Um, you know, a bit of... A, a, advice on it and you know they were fit to come in and see what we were doing and uh, mm -hmm. how it was going and what the natural paths was it and it made total sense yeah. you know instead of uh, having a hand on every aspect of it and trying to do everything right. so uh, it was I, it was uh, with a bit of help with it, it then it, it was the right thing I, um, th that's it and even those terms and things weren't you know weren't the kind of people to be fully understanding even that but as we were growing and we were bringing staff on it just needed structure and there wouldn't be a day that would go by yet where important decisions wouldn't be discussed yeah um to totally discussed and only when we're both comfortable with it will we move forward with it so <clears throat> the rules are the rules and the, the titles are the titles the reality is that um you know the, the important decisions that we we do have to take are are it's a very mutual situation you know yeah it's a joint it's a joint decision yeah. you just touched on it there so the business advice and the mentorship is something that seems to have made the journey a little easier i think you've been involved with invest and i quite a bit um and there's probably other people um that have provided assistance along the way um, so invest in, take an invest in any, but are there any other t in terms of businesses or clubs or friends that you know have kind of helped you along the process and going, you know, guys, you might want to consider this, so you might want to, you know, change that or or whatever. You know, obviously you're from a football background, you probably know <laughs> so many people involved in football who have different opinions. Is there any in particular that were good mentors and advisors in that? Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> there have been dozens of people that have been very helpful for us. I mean, Invest have been a great partnership, really. Uh, they've been, uh, Leo Donnelly, who's our client executive, Leo has been first class from the moment we met him. He's just been very helpful and very understanding of what we wanted to achieve and things like that. But yeah. even on a, a, a more day-to-day -day kind of fundamental level, we we realised early on that we you know in, in order to have that structure and that proper administrative approach that was something that we we needed to look kind of beyond ourselves for naturally, and um, Peter Kelly who uh, is our uh, executive chairman as far as we're concerned, we, the three of us would sit down on a weekly basis and talk about everything. Peter um, has been fantastic. He um, is based in Oma. He has been on this journey with us, really, for the last mm -hmm. two and a half, three years. Um, and any any type of administrative kind of requirement from the business, Peter has an input on it, and, okay. and, and even more than that. So, um, you know, very hands-on guy, uh, loves it much, just as much as we do, and he's been a, f a magnificent um, ha help for us, without a doubt. And and just beyond that as well, all our staff are absolutely brilliant, very proud of them, and, and all of that. Um, our, our two managers at the minute, Emer McGuigan and um, Jared Devine, who have been there really for the last four or five years, you know, they have been uh, absolutely brilliant for us as well. And everybody brings something different, so... Those three people in particular and Leo uh, have, have been great for us, you know. Like you said, it's a team thing. Um, oh, it is. I suppose Sean and I, from the start too, you know, there's, we, I say, we've no, we had no business background, you know, we didn't start, like, um, we're finding our way and, you know, it is so important that these are, we, we know that from the start. So we get people in that are experts in their field or that, yeah. you know, that have that, that experience, like, and, and take their advice. Now, you don't always have to take all their advice all the time. But what they bring to it, like, you know, when he was Sean is on about Peter there, you know, and what he brings is something completely different than what she, that Sean and I have. You know, it's just from a, from a different background and a yeah. different point of view and all. And that structure um, is excellent. And it's the same with the team right through. 
you know, every, everybody we feel brings something different, and there's, yeah. you know, nobody's can be right all the time. Um, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are, and you surround yourself with the right people. You're giving yourself the best chance. Yeah. It's all about it's all about the the people you surround yourself with. Oh, big time. T- to be honest, out of the ones that or the podcast that I've done so far, it's definitely the one kind of continuing theme is that you know take advice, get oh, ask yeah. questions. You yeah. know you can't do everything, you can't know everything. You know you need to kind of if you don't know something, ask. ask. God, that's the big thing. I, uh, the best one I've ever heard was the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. Mm. You know, right. and like there's been so many questions yeah. where we've come along, everything from accountancy to uh you know just the structure that the business structure the business plan and the so so many market and all these things that we had no actual experience and like that we we're finding our way with all so, this marketing is a completely separate so animal. we were asking pile pile piles of questions you know yeah no oh, it's, it's definitely the way to do it so you've got ambitious plans for the future so i think so far um you're targeting expansion markets so i think you're way off into Ireland is it and then over to over to uh, the UK as well is that right and Invest and I have supported that how's that been as a you know you have something you're doing pretty well and then you can go right what, what's the next step mm-hmm. well, that's the next step now yeah well here um, gr- growth underpins everything we do you know it's important um, if you don't sit back on a, uh, at any time of the year and think that you know that's it now for the next six months whatever we're, we're you just don't do that yeah so <clears throat> we're constantly analyzing and what we've realized is that you know there, there's such a high level of participation in sport on this island mm-hmm. and with our order management system with the people that we have the understanding of the the games and the cultural climate and things like that that really our focus mm-hmm. um definitely should be here locally regionally nationally yep. uh, and that's initially um now anything beyond that who knows um yep. who knows but but definitely here i mean we've got an office in dublin now uh, with Niall scully as well um you know 20 odd staff up here so there's quite a bit of momentum here which we're very grateful and thankful for and it's about really building on that michael before um we would look at anything beyond yeah, that, you know. yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we know what we're doing is working like clubs that are coming with us. You know, they're staying with us. Like a lot of the clubs are with us from the very, very start. Yeah. Um, so we know what we're doing and what is working. And mm-hmm. if it's, you know, if, if we're NFC is in one club then and it's working there, there's no reason why it shouldn't work with the club next to it. You know, and yeah. that, that's that's what we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's so much potential w- within that that you know we're we're slowly going out tonight. It's a pretty competitive market. I mean, so you have the likes of O'Neill's on the on the GAA side. Uh, how do you pronounce the rugby one? Ulster rugby, correct? Kukri. 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 I actually looked at that last night so that I wouldn't yes. mispronounce it, but there you go, that yeah. didn't work out. <laughs> 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 but then to a lesser probably extent, there's, you know, the, the general sports like Nike and Adidas and things like that. I know it's not a direct competition. You are managing, you know. You're not only are you competing. You're 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 growing. You're expanding. Things are things are going well. The clubs are are uh, you know supportive of it and things like that. In such a competitive market, do you ever sit back and think about it and and see how surreal that is? That you know, like obviously, whenever you grew, have had grown up, it probably would have been O'Neill's and things like that. Does it seem that surreal now that you're actually providing that kit now? That it's it's the two of you. Do you ever think about it? <laughs> <clears throat> no, no, you've asked the question. You you probably don't, you know. Um personally, you know, it really is a day to day, week to week thing. Yeah. We're not that inclined to sit back and 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 look at uh, at let's say what we've achieved. We know what's going on and things like that. There is always the next avenue, the next step. You just need to be constantly planning and, and, and getting ready for... And maybe someday, you know, it'll be nice to sit back whether it's a year's time or five years or whatever and say, that was that was great to have done all that. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> I, th- I think for us anyway, you know, you've, you've three real things. You have the what, which is... Um, the product itself 
right? Um, you have the how, and and that's how we bring that product to people. Yeah. But the big thing is the way. Mm-hmm. There needs to be a solid enough way for you to keep getting up and keep pushing on, keep moving forward. And I think for anybody, if they can get up and answer that question, why they're doing this, that will keep the momentum going no matter what. That will keep the long term viability within your plan. And um, there is a very strong way for us, considering our background with with the GAA and just sport in general, that way to bring a a hassle-free process to decision makers, a lot of them volunteers. Yeah. That is, there's there's such a strong reason why we do this. Yeah. And that, um, to answer your question, uh, sit back and think we've achieved X way. That's great, and we're very happy. However, we need to we need to keep building on that way. You know. Yeah, we uh, we actually, <clears throat> I suppose we we of course we're aware aware of the competition, but from the outset we've always said just if we can concentrate on ourselves, you know, and what we do, what we bring it, how do we how do we get better, um. And we're always looking for that 5%, yeah. 5%. So we actually never really talk about where we are at. The market. like You know, the, no, just, it's just it's about just the... uh, what can we do and what can we do to get better. And we know that no matter how good things are going, they can go bad. Yeah. But, you know, they can go bad very quickly. And if you take your foot off, that, that can happen. Yeah. And also I, when things are going bad, that, you know, they can go, get good very quickly as well. Like, so we're very aware of that. So we probably don't even allow ourselves to think about... So many sport crossovers here in the yeah. sense that, you know, you, you get that 5%, keep going, you know, do a bit more. That's it, there's 5% and everything. And everything. We're always looking, always looking for that, fi- that 5%. Oh, it's, it's really good. Uh, yeah. It's constant, constantly building. And br- it is, it, 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 it is, that's the way it is. Yeah. Sometimes I'd show Shani something, what about this, some job? Ah, oh, it's a good job. What about, what have we done this well? I've been you know. <laughs> Not happy with just what you're showing there. Oh, uh, <laughs> yesterday we were just talking about you know it's such an improvement and uh, it's like scan the barcode now and and, and it's going to leave it really easy for us to button things together for the customer. And it was, it was this man had been working on it for such a long time and I, I kind of come along and says you know but I've seen that was on a bigger screen. But I felt like saying. <laughs> Shut up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that, that was, uh, or just that's the way it is. That's, that's the way it is. Like, never have I. Just never have I. There's always a wee bit more. That, that, you know, yeah. like, not, that's a great job. Jeez, that's brilliant. <laughs> but we are great fellow at the same time. Yeah, course, we are happy. Course, yeah. But um, <laughs> if you say, say if you had to look back in five years time, right, so what would, what would that be? 20, 20, 26, 2026. Uh, 27, 27, sorry, 27. Right? 27. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid to pull you on it because it was wrong. <laughs> 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 I think I three times through me. <laughs> so you look back in 2027, get that right. Uh, what do you hope MFC has done since then? Yeah. Has, has done? So what has it achieved in the last five years? So from where it is now, what do you hope that over the next five years it does? Uh, um, f- five years a long time. You know, it, it really has only been six years that yep. we've been. In five years, honestly, just just a lot more of the same yep. thing. Just grow it and, and keep just, going, just yeah. improve it. And yeah, yeah more, more clubs, obviously, with us and uh, more partnerships, hopefully yep. through, you know. Mm-hmm. And just the, the the brand being stronger, you know, MFC being renowned as a teamwear brand that, you know, makes teamwear easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you've grown a substantial amount since you started. Um, kind of covered that it was just the two of you at the start. Um, I think I counted twenty two on the website now. Twenty two employees. Um, uh, how proud does that make you to provide opportunities like that for local people? That's that's class. That that really is. Um, and talk about accountability and and all of that. That that's a big driving force for us. That we have lots of variable people involved with the company who want to work there, who are on the edge head, very happy to be there anyway. And you know, those livelihoods, the responsibility of that, 
people that are making big decisions, they're getting married, they're building houses, they're having, they're starting young families. That that is very rewarding for us too. Yeah. Um, to think that we have given the opportunity for that, and will hopefully continue to do that. So <clears throat> that that is a massive part of getting up and at it every day to keep keep that momentum and and um, I'm very proud of that. You yeah. Know. Yeah. yeah, I we uh, every time things are getting you know stretched or under pressure, and then we're saying, well, you know, we need to take somebody else in to 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 look at that. And then they're there. Thankfully, they've they've all been great. They're there a month or two, or you're going. How did we ever do without that person? You know, yeah. that, that, that's how it goes. Like so, of it, that's that's the growth of it. Mm-hmm. But it, no, it's great. And you know, traditionally, I, I'm not too far away. I'm actually older than than both of you. Um, Good. <laughs> 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 um, but whenever, whenever I can, I'll include us all collectively and say whenever we were growing up, um, I'm not that far away. No, you're <laughs> sure you're not. Um, <clears throat> I always found that my friends were having to, you know, the general conversation was you had to move away, and there was opportunity. You know, like vast majority of my friends either went over to the to England to university, or they've gone to Australia, or you know, London, or or wherever sometimes Belfast. Um, do you think it's starting to change where where there are more opportunities locally now and that people can actually stay in Northern Ireland? You know, is it, is it gathering momentum as far as, you know, people like yourselves kind of providing that opportunity? Is it getting better as far as you see it? I, I, I think it is def, definitely getting better. I mean, MSC is one example of how uh, uh, an idea can be um, you know, brought together and, 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 and you, you bring in that collective and you have 15, 20 people striving towards and opportunities and all of that. Okay, so but even beyond that, with, <clears throat> I think anyway, with, with so much access to the world now and opportunity, like with online situations, um, et cetera. I think people are becoming more aware of what is actually available to them yep. and what they can do. Um, whereas arguably in the past, we, we mightn't have had that in this part of the world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, I, I think people are just opening their minds a bit more now. They're a bit more comfortable to try something for themselves. And you can see it actually in the last year or two, especially the COVID situation. People are starting to think about different routes and different jobs and becoming self-employed and giving something a shot. Yeah, I, I have to say, you know, even people that I was studied with and meeting them recently, um, a lot of them are not, you know, teaching anymore. They've given something else a go, and you know, from that you can create something very special, and you can offer employment, and you can yeah push the thing on. So I think the climate is there for people you know given something that they've loved or they've wanted to do for such a long time a shot mm-hmm. and uh, from that ultimately you create a business you may create a company you, you uh, and there's a you know a knock-on effect an accumulative uh, effect yes of it. absolutely so yeah. um I, I i do believe that and, and uh, a lot of the people that i would not about wasn't speak to you know, they're all a lot of them are, are thinking about maybe giving them something a rattle you know and it's 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 refreshing yeah. um Maybe it just wasn't the chosen path here. Yeah, for a long time. I, th- I think for a long time it wasn't. You know, it wasn't that way. Where we were kind of, but you know, it wasn't really good prosperity ways here and stuff like that. But hopefully, it, it's it's starting to change, and and you know, people can give it that shot. Oh, it is. It's getting <clears throat> it's getting better all the, all the time. We definitely, yeah. would, I believe that. Um, <clears throat> it's not it's not easy, but it's you know it's not easy anywhere. Sometimes yeah. things far off maybe look more attractive and all you know, but. If you can create a business here at home, um, which as Shawnee says is 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 much easier to do now because because it's a smaller world. It's a smaller yep. world, mm-hmm. and if you can do that, uh, then it is great. We we are very fortunate to to have a business at home and not have to go abroad or go away. Um, it's it's fantastic. You know, we're very very grateful for it. Yeah. The 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 <clears throat> purpose of the podcast, I suppose, um, is to learn from people like yourself. So people who did take that shot, entrepreneurs, business leaders, um. And provide listeners with an insight and and you know the things that that haven't maybe some parts of it and and certain at certain parts of a realism. There's some people have an um uh, a thought that I want to be a chief executive of a company or my own company without actually appreciating that listen, it's hard work. Like you know you you have to understand that 
it's not just being kind of you'll be immediately rich and and uh, it'll be easy. Um, but it is to shine a light on the positive things in the Northwest and hoping to inspire and assist future entrepreneurs on their journey. So with that in mind, um, what would your advice be for somebody who is just starting out in that journey now? What would your your advice be to somebody just on the very, very start? Um, <clears throat> well, my, my advice would be that B- before you consider doing anything purposefully, try and find that way that I spoke about earlier on, you know, not just concentrating on what or how, but really find that way because that is something that will carry you through the challenges of, of any kind of business growth or, you know, that that fundamental reason is the way you want to do it. That That is something that I would suggest to anybody to ask themselves. And beyond that then, the next step after that, to me anyway, is opportunities and good people. Mm-hmm. And going back to 2009 or whatever, I mean, been good mates with Fib for, for quite a long time. And it just, the person he is, and, and it, it just made complete sense to sit down and say, you know, we are going to take something on here together, let's say. There is no, there is no way you will do that on your own. It just will not happen. A friendship needs two people. A relationship needs two people. A business needs two people and more. Yeah, it it does. Mm-hmm. And 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 maybe that's advice that you're taking from somebody, or you know, sharing ideas, or you're just you're that bit more accountable. So mm-hmm. get yourself surrounded with people that are going to help you, and that they're going to challenge you, and are going to say to you sometimes, "No, you're wrong." Mm-hmm. So that that is very important, I think. Um, and and the only other thing I'll say is, you know, it it might seem like you're taking a risk, and you, you probably are from leaving something that you've been doing for a while, um, and maybe it is very secure, maybe it's not. But I'll go back to when I was teaching, and I remember sitting down, you know, with the principal and and, and different things, and people were saying to me, "God, you're taking a you're taking a massive risk." That actually wasn't the reality. The reality was if I made a bad decision now. That would be a risk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that would be a risk now. But at that time, it wasn't. It it, it was just a separate avenue. Yeah. So you, you ch- just channel the mind into thinking. You know, I'm going to give this the best shot I, I can because there is a strong reason why. Get yourself surrounded by advice and don't be the smartest in the room. Don't don't be. <laughs> That's a load of rubbish. Be the smartest person in the room. Don't be. Just get yourself around with people that get are a lot smart smarter. People. <laughs> get smarter. Um and 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 back yourself. Put your own ass in the line. Yeah. And that, that's really what it comes down to. Do you think you need to be all in, like committed to it? Do you think it works if you aren't? Um no, <clears throat> excuse me. I think you do. You do you need you do you need to be all in. You really do, you know. Um and I suppose it's a it's a it's a day at a time, but really, is like you know, I suppose some people maybe do be put off by God. I don't know if I could do that for so many years or whatever. But you don't. You only have to do it for the day. Yeah. You know, tomorrow's another day. You know, and then hopefully you're to do it again. Then, um, and there does it like there's there's highs and lows in it. You know, but like you're just more on about here in the northwest and stuff. But you know, and only now that we're sort of in this and dealing with different businesses and you know you see the amount of businesses that are out there that are huge. You know. There's like there's there's so many of them. Even where like where we're from, Dromore a business sold recently there for a billion dollars, you know, uh Euro auctions. Like so like it started very humbly in Dromore. Um so there's 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 lots, lots of businesses out there that we, we you wouldn't even be aware of, like. Yeah. Um and seeing seeing that them things or those things are possible, uh, you know, it does drives you on, it gives you a bit more confidence, like, but a, a day at a time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In relation to, so like uh, an, an employee sense, so um, what do you look for in employees? Is it the academic side? Is it the, is it the drive? Is it the, the energy? What's the main? Just attitude, hey? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good attitude and. 100%. Roll up uh, the sleeves, get stuck on. Yeah. Well, big believers in letting people, letting adults be adults. Yeah. So somebody could come in off the street and teach us all something new. Um, very, very accountable 
people, I suppose, in our in our work, everybody. And just just it's your attitude. That is fundamentally the the thing we will go to. If you are a personable person and you're gonna listen to what others are saying, and you're also going to offer advice when you can, and be prepared to, to get involved with the journey. With all due respect, academics and things are, are, are second to that. Yeah. Um and we have countless um examples of people who have came from a certain background joined the company and have completely transformed their thinking they didn't necessarily use any of their past kind of academic experience let's say you know in a sense uh, in a certain field but have have strived because they're just their attitude's fantastic so that's that's the big one skill skills can be taught yeah, attitude's a big one. Like it's, yeah, yeah they, <clears throat> they have they have an interest and a passion for it. Like then, you know, everything else is half the battle. Yeah, they will they will learn like us anything that needs to be. You know, yeah, and most most skills, but well, like they they can learn them and get, and get right up to speed. And there we have a good number of our team that have just been sharing that journey along with us. You know, and and finding their way as such. Like, but they're passionate about it, and they're you know, they're they have a great work ethic, work ethic, and all those things. So, um. Would would have been very fortunate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And finally, last question: You both still playing football? <laughs> I I'm not. <laughs> uh, no, this man owes the war uh, I no, I pulled a pin last summer, uh, Michael. On it, it was just uh, I was living down here quite a way now, and I was traveling up and down the road, uh, trying to commit and stuff, and turned thirty five there, and fortunately. Time, time is just time's time's got the better of me. So, make make peace, peace with it, but hopefully get involved. Other ways, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Other ways. No, listen, guys, I really, really appreciate your time. So, thank you very much yeah. for coming. It was great to have you. So, really appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. All right, Michael. thanks, now. Cheers. Good one.